welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer interview. I'm Callie here at Origins Game Fair in Columbus, Ohio with Jessa from WizKids. Hi Jessa, how's it going? Going great, thank you. How are you? I'm great, and how is Origins going for WizKids? It's been very, very fun, you know, showing off a lot of our upcoming products. We have a lot of exciting things coming out, and it's been great to really, <clears throat> excuse me, share those with our fans. Awesome. Yes, I know you guys have a very dedicated uh, community fan base, so it's awesome to see them here. And you have a big presence at Origin. Yes, we we have so many. We have tournament games like Hero Clicks and Dice Masters, and we have board games, and we have collectible miniatures. So we really have a wide variety of fans, and so it's been great to see them all come together and meet them all at this show. Awesome, thank you. So what are you guys most excited to share about at Origin? Well, we just released a great game called Smash City. It's a game where players are kaiju monsters and they are destroying a city, but they're not destroying a city because they want to destroy a city. They're destroying a city because they're trying to battle for dominance and the city is just collateral damage. And the game has three dimensional wooden or cardboard buildings and you roll giant foam dice to attack each other, which knocks the buildings down. You also literally throw car tiles. The board. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to see it. And then, uh, what else are you guys sharing? We're actually showing um, our first prototype of our upcoming game, Hako Ona. It's one of our most exciting uh, releases. It's coming out in September for the Halloween season. It is a horror game that was very, very successful in Japan. And we got the ability to localize it, bring it to the United States. It had never been brought into English before. And the game is an asymmetrical hidden movement horror game where one player is the ghost girl haunting the house and the other players are visitors who are trying to escape while she tries to kill them. So none of the players know where she is. She's hidden under tokens throughout the game and they have to look at the tokens to find the things that they want to escape, but they might find her. And if they find her, they die and become part of her team. Awesome, that sounds like a great Halloween game. I'll have to add it to my Halloween blog list. <laughs> uh, what else are you guys sharing? We're also showing off um, Kibble Scuffle, which is another one we're releasing at the end of June. It is a game where you're feeding your cats. You have cats, you have a lot of cats, and you're trying to feed them, and you're trying to collect the most food points from feeding your cats while getting them away from your opponent's food bowls. And the cool thing about this game is that the box itself the, the food points are represented by tiny cubes, and the box itself is made into look like a cat food box. So you pour the cubes out onto the table from the box. It has a spout, so you can do it like a cat food box. Awesome. Uh, anything else you want to share with us? Um, nothing specific. We have a lot of great games at the booth. We have a huge variety of things. Um, we're really excited about all of them. There are so many upcoming releases that we're showing off, and. We're really, you know, just excited to release them, show them to everybody because we know they're all going to be great hits. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to see uh, what the games look like. So let's go on over and see that. Great. Thank you. All right. We're back with Jessa from WizKids. So tell us a little bit about Smash City, which we can see over here. Yeah. Smash City is a really exciting game. Um, as I said, everyone is a kaiju monster battling for dominance in a city, but the city is just collateral. So you're knocking over buildings, rolling foam dice, and we created unique kaiju for each player. So we have the Toxic Iguana, who is a toxic iguana. We have the Kalobster, who is a human who is melded with a lobster. We have Giga Shogun, who is a robot samurai. And we have Magmaladon, who is a lava shark. So, oh, awesome. So you get to, you know, create havoc in the city. Exactly. And like I said, there's literally a point where you can throw car tiles. And I'll show you that in a minute. That way you can take a look. <laughs> awesome. All right, we're back, Jessa. So tell us about uh, Kibble Sniffle. Kibble Scuffle. Scuffle sorry. <laughs> Kibble Sniffle is a cute name, though. Okay, yeah. Kibble Scuffle is a game where players are feeding their cats, but they're competing to feed their cats the most. So there's three food bowls and players are trying to bring the most cats to their food bowl while getting them away from their opponent's food bowls. And like I said, one of the coolest things about this game is that the box is actually a box of cat food. So I'm going to show you right now how it yeah. works. So you pour the cubes out onto the food bowl using the box. The box has a nice little spout. 
make it as easy as possible to pour the food out. Because, you know, the easier you get the food out for your cats, the better. Better. Yeah. Cat, cat like food. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. All right. And we're back with Jesse. Uh, so tell us about Hako Ono. So Hako Ono was a game that was very, very popular in Japan, and it was never released in English, and so we decided to bring it to the States because J-horror has always been a very popular thing. You know, we have The Ring, we have The Grudge. People love Asian horror films in general, and this really brings that theme into gaming, and it's very unique for that reason. So in the game, one player is the Hako Ona. She's the monster. She's trying to kill all the visitors. The visitors are trying to escape the house, so they're looking under these various tiles to try and find a way out of the house. But under one of the tiles is the Hako Ona. And if the visitor finds her tile, they die. And they join her team. Now, one of the really cool things about this game that's very unique is that before a player can even take their turn, they have to complete a dexterity challenge. And what that is, is they have to avoid making noise. So the way we do that is we have this little tile with this little blip pearl thing on it. And players take discs and they stack them on top of it. So the first player would stack the one and then the next player on their turn would stack the second one. And I'm really bad at it. <laughs> but if the tower falls yeah. at any time during the game, whether it's at the beginning of someone's turn or if the table get bu gets bumped, the Hako Ona takes her turn immediately. All the players close their eyes and she gets to move somewhere into the house, into an adjacent room or an adjacent tile. That's a really cool element. I also like how the art is very creepy. It definitely looks like a haunted house. Yes, and speaking of creepy art, one of the most fun things about this game is one of the ways the Hako Ona can win is if on her turn she makes it impossible for the players to win. So if all of the ways that they can escape the house are eliminated except for one and she moves onto that tile, which she gets to take that tile and put it on her own tile, which makes it they can't access it, then she wins. And what that means is that she gets to, while the player's eyes are closed, she gets to hold the game box up directly inches from their face so that when they open their eyes, she is staring at them. And it's game over. Creepy. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much, Jessa, for sharing all of the cool new games that WizKids has coming out. We've enjoyed uh, looking at them and seeing them. I can't wait to play some of them. Uh, anything else you want to say about Origins or uh, maybe where people can see find you guys next? Um, well, we will be at PAX Unplugged and we'll be at Essence, so come take a look for us there. Um, otherwise, you can check out our social media, WizKids Games on Instagram and Twitter or WizKids on Facebook. Um, and go check out our website, wizkids.com, and make sure that you can find our games at your local FLGS. Awesome. Thank you so much. And as always, we look forward to seeing you guys next time. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer interview here at Origins Game Fair in Columbus, Ohio. Today we're with Tyson Merklick and we're going to be showing off the game Tasty Humans by Pangea Games. Now we actually got to try out Highways and Byways previously a while ago, uh, and that was a really great game. And here comes a new one by them, which we'll find out if it's great or not by uh, what the description is right now. Huh? You ready to go ahead? Yeah. Right. So Tasty Humans is a one to four player tile placement pattern building game where you assume the role of a insatiably hungry monster and they're really hungry for you guessed it humans so wait this is like a puzzle game then huh it is a puzzle game oh my gosh my wife is gonna be the one creaming me at this one already i know that yeah this is i've, I've heard that more than once this game has a lot of like spatial awareness kind of stuff that you have oh, to be aware of I'm not so good at and it's <laughs> pattern building stuff and so it gets this really exciting kind of complex puzzle it if you're pr prone to like thinking out all the things, analysis paralysis type things, you have to be careful because you have a lot of options to go through. But the goal is you're a, a monster trying to fill your stomach with adventurers that you have a specific craving for. The most tasty human beings. The most tasty human beings, exactly that. And are there ones that are not as tasty as others? There are, there are. So like, I, I mean, it depends on your personal craving. So each monster has, for example. I prefer to have cleric today. Yeah, exactly. They'll they'll go for the clerics or the wizards or whatever. There's a bunch of different types, but each each monster will have their own personal craving that they're trying to accomplish, which is shown by a specific thing. So, for example, the legendary dragon that I have over here has a 
it wants the same body parts, which are represented in these little tiles right here, as um, in in a two by two grid pattern. So you put you want to get groupings of the same types of things in a two by two grid pattern. So that's one way that you're going to be scoring points in this game. But it's got this little Tetrisy element. So on each of these adventurers that you're consuming, they have these different um, configurations of tiles that you'll be putting into your stomach. And like Tetris or other puzzle games, you're going to drop them down from the top. And in the configuration they have, you can rotate them in any position you want. And they're going to fill to the bottom of your stomach. And your goal is to get them in the arrangement that you want according to what are called leader tiles, which okay. basically you've got these leaders who are, uh, you're struggling, you're, they're struggling, you're holding them, they're bringing on these peasants to try and, and, and adventurers to come and rescue them, and, and you're just taunting them with that, and you'll consume them as the game goes on. And these little leader tiles end up actually being your scoring configuration in how they drop into your stomach spatially. So there's a lot of this uh, really fun interaction that allows to do it. It lasts. A few I don't know. It's kind of offensive to human beings because we're getting eaten here. <laughs> but but think about how offensive it is to monsters to always be re represented as the bad guy. That is true. I didn't think about it that way. That's super cool. I like the Tetris theme. I like that. I think it's really unique and interesting. And as well as the fact that you have to select the different ones and how you're going to go ahead. But how about how you're going to go ahead and go about that in combination. And while I'm not good at puzzle games, I really, really do like them. I've played quite a few of them. Sagrada is a favorite of mine, and I, I really enjoyed Tiny Towns, I believe. I don't know if you played towns, that as well. Yeah. Very, very good games. Uh, and this one here, is this one, what's it like? Well, what would you say another game represents this one? Or is this very unique? There is a unique component to it, but it's similar in, in a lot of different ways, too. Some people have compared it to Sagrada in that kind of spatial awareness. You're trying to build those patterns. Others have said Azul type. But we think that this stands alone on its own as a really unique way that has a thematic tie that some of those more abstract puzzle games don't often have. And that's the thing I think that really makes this one stand apart beyond the rest is that you get this really fun theme that you're going to consume these adventures and each of these adventures have a different attribute about them. So like if you eat a wizard, you're going to consume them and then their magic potions kind of bubble up inside you and they make tiles flip in your stomach or if you eat a cleric it's going to heal damage some of these adventurers in here with the red on them the swordsman and the archer can actually do damage to you they don't put up a fight very well when you try and grab them and eat them individually but if you start eating their buddies they're going to attack you and hurt you and so it gives you this really exciting kind of interaction as well. the theme of eating people and then struggling to not get eaten I like it. I like it. The game is for one to four players. It takes 30 to 60 minutes, and it's for ages 14 and up. If you want to take, out, take a look at tasty human beings, or tasty humans, whatever you want to call it, uh, you can go ahead and take a look at what site? So it, you can look at PangeaBoardGames.com. We also have a lot of different uh, sites for it. TastyHumansBoardGame.com is the official site for it, where you have... Uh, You'll have a, the ability to download a print and play. You can actually play Tabletop Simulator right now. And we will be live on Kickstarter in a couple of weeks, June 25th, to be able to get a copy of Tasty Humans. Where's my copy of Tasty Humans? Let's play. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching. Have you got anything else you want to say? You I good? think that about covers it. Thanks. Eat some Tasty Humans. All right. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer interview here at Origins Game Fair 2019 in Columbus, Ohio. I'm Callie, here with Chris Leader from Calliope Games. Hello, Chris. Hello, how are you? I'm great. How's it going here at the con? It is fantastic. We've got games, we've got people. I mean, what more could you want? Well, I'm super excited to meet you. Uh, Suro was one of the first game, more modern board games that I played, and it has that special place in my heart. So. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. We hear that from a lot of people, and that's why it's nice to have even more Suro coming, but we won't talk about that right now. Okay. Well, what are you excited to share at Origins this year? Well, we've got three new games that we're debuting here, and this is Spymaster. This is one of the three new games. This is a game by Seth Johnson, and it's from our Titan series. Um, and this is a game of divvying up intelligence 
and using that intelligence to travel around the globe and accomplish missions. Because everyone in this game is the leader of a clandestine spy agency. Ooh. <laughs> all right, and then like how many players, how long does it take, that sort of thing? Sure, like all Calliope games, we want to have games that are, um, that play a, a big game group and they don't take a long time. So this is a two to six player game and it takes about oh, 30 to 50 minutes, depending on how many people you have and um, how much thinking they like to do about what they're doing, because there is some thinking that you're going to be doing when you're playing Spy Master. Yep, I see some intelligence cards that you have to gather, I'm guessing. That is that is correct. So um, one of the things this game has going for it is it, it uses the I split, you choose mechanism. So whoever is the Spy Master for the round, they're going to pick one of these stacks of intelligence cards, and then what they're going to do is they're going to lay them out in the order that they're stacked. You can't change the order. And then they're going to divvy up the cards into a number of files equal to the number of players. But they can't change the order. So let's say in a three-player game here, maybe they decide to divvy this up this way, this up this way. So now they've got three different piles, and then they put this Spy Master card on one of the piles. And this is going to determine who's the Spy Master in the next round. So maybe they decide to put that on top of this pile. Now, the person to the left of the Spy Master who did all this divvying is going to be the first one to take one of these batches of files. So maybe that person takes this and puts it in front of them. So some could be better than others. Yeah, but the Spy Master is the one who gets to decide what's in each one because, so the next person just took that. This person takes this. Now the Spy Master's left with whatever's left. So they want to make sure that they don't create a file that is just full of junk because guess what? They're going to end up with that pile of junk. So they get to take this. And then, using the intelligence that you grabbed, you will now take turns moving agents around the map and trying to get them into position so you can complete missions. All right? So, and these are the missions up here. That is correct. So, like in this case, we have a mission down here in South America. This takes place in the blue city, which is Caracas up here. We move this out of the way. So we know that that's the location. It takes one of a player's agents and two of these clear freelance agents. And then you need to spend three dossier intelligence. So there's different types of different colors. So this one, you have to, in the blue city, you've got to get this combination of agents along with this intelligence in order to do that. So on my turn, what I might do is burn this three to get three movement points. And then if I'm the red player, I can go one, two, and then maybe I decide to fly this red pawn over here to a different place. Maybe I'm setting myself up for later, but I've spent my three movement to get these people into where I need. Now I have one of my color, and I have two clear, which is the recipe I needed on this mission. And now I can discard an intelligence card of the type, and it can be three or more, in order to accomplish this mission, I'll get the eight points. So I will take this, and I will put it face down on my board, and then I'll flip up the next mission, and then it goes to the next player. And they will use their cards. They can burn one card to move their agents and the freelance agents, any combination, and then they try to accomplish the missions that are here. So awesome. We go, yeah, we just go around and around the table, playing one card for movement, maneuvering people around, and then accomplishing missions. And then once everyone passes, they can't do anything else, then whoever chose that Spy Master card will then grab another pile of intelligence and they will divvy it up and you do that for five rounds. So at the end of the five rounds, then whoever has the most mission points is the winner? So it's, it's the mission points from here and then there's also a bonus. Whoever has the highest value of each colored intelligence gets a five point bonus. For, so there's, there's blue, there's yellow, there's red and there's black. Whoever has the most of each color left in their hand gets five points. So if you think, well, they've been taking a lot of black cards. I think they might have the most. Uh, I don't know. So there's a little bit of a secret thing. You don't know exactly what's going to happen with that. But yeah, so points for missions and then those bonuses. Whoever has the highest score wins. This is, I like this though. This is cool. So in the final round, the fifth round, whoever took the pile that has the Spy Master, if there's a tie in points at the end of that round, the person who took the Spy Master card wins, even if they weren't one of the tied players. What? Yeah, so if you get this and you think it's going to come down to the wire and you're the one who grabs this, 
you may be the one who wins because you were sneaky and got to be the spy master in the last round. That's awesome. So if someone's interested in Spy Master, where can they learn more or how to get the game? Sure. You can go to our website, which is calliopegames.com. Um, it's going to be available at all friendly local game stores. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter, at Calliope Games, or on Facebook, Calliope Games. And we'll have all kinds of information and all kinds of other stuff. And on YouTube, on our uh, Calliope Games, we've got uh, how-to-play videos for these rapid run-throughs in three minutes. We can teach you how to play all these games. Awesome. Thank you so much, Chris. It was great to meet you and hear from you all about Calliope Games and what you got going on. I hope you have a great con. And uh, yeah, anything you want to say? No, thank you for coming by and uh, let's play some games. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is Unfiltered Gamer at Origins with another interview. Thank you and look forward to seeing you guys next time. Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer uh, interview here at Origins Game Fair in Ohio. And I'm here with Patrick Leader with Leader Games. And we're going to be talking about two games here. One of them is Vast and the other one is called what again? Vast and Mysterious Manor is one game. Manor. And we also have Root Underworld here. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Underworld is the new expansion to Root, or is it a yes, separate yes, game? it's an okay. expansion to, to Root. Uh, it adds two new factions, the Crows and the Moles, as well as two more Vagabonds. Okay. Yeah. So I've never played Vast, but I have played Root, and yeah. Root is a very, it's a very really cool game. And I'm excited to see about hear about more expansion content. So what are you going to get in the new expansion content for Root? So for Root, you're going to get, um, like I said, the Moles, who are um, kind of an interventionist faction. And so they're able to move in anywhere they want on the map because they dig tunnels into the into the clearing and then pop up and come out of it. Uh, they also have uh, you're trying to build sets of cards, and with the sets of cards, you can turn or, I'm sorry, reveal them, and then you add um, a parliament member to your to your house or your, to your cabinet, and then those give you new actions every turn that you can take until you lose them, and uh, and so you have to protect your buildings to 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 keep them safe uh, from harm. So. Okay. So and there's there's vagabonds as well. Right? There's two more vagabonds. Yes, uh, there's a new adventure, owl adventurer, and a new uh, squirrel harrier. And then also there's the crow uh, faction. And the uh, the Corvid conspiracy is a bunch of spy masters who are. I imagine there's a lot of crows too. Would that be right? Is there, is there a lot of miniatures? Yeah, crows? there's 15 uh, crow people. I would imagine yeah. so. Yeah, 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 yeah. So and then as well as the moles. Perhaps a murder of them. Yes, perhaps. <laughs> oh my God! Something was crawling off my. You dropped something. Uh, you lost something. That was really cool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That was a, it's an action shot right that here. Was, that was action shot. There's also two new maps for the game, uh, which I designed um, a, uh, um, a mountain pass, uh, which you can dig tunnels through during the game to expand the, the paths between the clearings. And you also get points for controlling the center of the map during the game. And, um, and as well as a lake map where you can, um, there's a giant lake in the center of the map instead of a river, and you can pay the ferry to move you around the, actually you get paid. For moving around the board oh, really? across the lake, yes, yep, awesome. yeah. And if the otters are in play, then they just take over the the lake as their as, as the thing that they sell as their home base. Kind yeah, of thing. yep. So that'll be on there. So great. I, I I love Root, and if you guys haven't played Root, it's an excellent game. Would you say you, they should pick up it all at once, or try Root first and then go for all the rest I of mean, them? I mean, you want to pick it up all at once, right? Uh, They're all so, the, when you play Root, though, what's interesting is all the different factions play so differently. But it's asymmetrical uh, play, basically. So everybody yeah. is different, but they all have very, very fair and balanced rules to them. So they all function very similarly in how they're going to be scoring points and, and whatnot they, to win the game. And as the new maps come out, you're going to see them playing a little differently, too, because of that. Because uh, like the otters are not quite as strong on the lake, for instance. And so you'll have to kind of adjust your play style. Make it more of a social game. Then, yeah, well. a little bit more, yeah. So. Um, yeah, and so that's uh, that'll be coming out in uh, December. Is our is our kind of our end, like when we're shipping. Um, you can still pick it up if you want to pick it up the whole thing. It's still you just go to the Kickstarter. There's a pre-order button. It goes right to backer kit, and you can you can pick up as little or as much as you want. You can pick up just the core set, or you can pick up the whole thing if you want to. And then we got Vast as well to talk about, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, last year we uh, kickstarted Vast the Mysterious Manor, which is a follow-up to Vast the Crystal Caverns. Uh, Cassie here is a character in. This is the miniature you get with the game. No. Uh, <laughs> oh, it isn't. <laughs> um, this is great. I like this piece that we built this because it led me to my favorite like message on 
uh, on Slack ever when I said, Kyle, where do you want me to send the skeleton? You know, because oh I'm I was shipping a skeleton. My wife uses Slack all the time, too, for her work as well. So it's pretty fancy, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and it was just $90 on Amazon. So uh, let me let me plug that. But you also went ahead and made yeah, it pretty, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Right? This is what he looks like in the game. So Vast the Mysterious Manor is to follow through Vast the Crystal Caverns. It's five new characters. There's a new hero. Uh, the skeletons are a new army of characters. Uh, there's a spider monster. The manor is playable, as well as the warlock, who is trying to beguile everybody during the game. And um, we, we worked really hard to improve. You know, the criticism we got for TCC was that the roles were a little bit hard to learn for your first time. So we worked very hard to improve the usability of each role so you can jump into it and play it faster. Uh, and there's also like a little sheet that, that teaches you how to set up and how to play your role and how to play against the other roles in the game. So it helps you get into the game faster. So, so we're going to, I think overall the word counts less for the rules. And so it's easier to teach because of that. Uh, and then we also did work to make sure that each role, so for instance, if you're playing the Paladin, who's the hero of Vast and Mysterious Manor, they can play in the Crystal Caverns and, and vice versa. You can have the Knight in the manor and so on. So the skeletons can be in the caves and so on. So it's a, it's a cool idea. I like that. It was a lot of work to get to work correctly. And in fact, at first we'd wanted to make it so that you could have any role in any game. Um, but we, we were like, no, one one can visit the other. You can try two if you want to. But we've, we've play tested one and so, to move our week. So yeah, so that's a, that'll, that'll be, uh, that's still available. The pre is still available. Um, uh, like for, um, I think this is actually the end of it. Like Origins. Right at the end here, Origins. Yeah, yeah. It, Origins will be. Yeah, the end you guys of the might miss it then at this yeah. time. And uh, if you order now, you get to the haunted hallways, which includes a new monster, the Shadow Paladin, that can replace the Spider and the Armored Knight, who's the Knight from Vast the Crystal Caverns, but she's grown up a little bit and she's now wearing armor, and she has a little bit different abilities than the Knight in the traditional game, and so you can play her as the hero instead. There's also more skeletons so you can pick and choose. All the skeletons, Casty here has a special ability. All the skeletons at different special abilities so you can mix and match those however you want to um yeah awesome i mean two really good games but basically everything i've heard about vast which i haven't played yet but i want to has been really good as well as root i actually own that that one's excellent game if you guys are interested definitely check out the expansion content for these games i hear nothing but good things so i suggest you do take take a look if you they want to get any more information out of you that isn't from a kickstarter where would they go uh they go to leadergames.com uh we have you know the site works just fine uh, otherwise, they can contact support on our site and ask questions, and we'll help them. Fancy. Yeah. Well, thanks so much, Patrick. I appreciate it. Nice to meet Easy you. Easy peasy. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys next time.